Hello, 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 and what is going on, everybody? It is Master of the TDS, and I'm joined by my lovely wife. Writing Raven. And we're back for another episode of Psycho Synopsis. Indeed. The segment where we summarize all the psycho for you. Just a scattering of topics throughout the week, all summarized into one neat little package for you to enjoy and consume at your leisure. You're welcome. Well, we're back. Last week, we were not able to post because of Passover. Mm Mm-hmm. But we're back now, and we should be having videos going forward, unless otherwise specified. Keep an eye on the community tab. We try to keep you guys updated with that, at least, so that way it doesn't just have a week where nothing gets uploaded and nobody knows anything. Yeah, that's why you made a calendar. Yep, that's true. Hmm. Now, of course, when we're not online, a bunch of stuff, news gets dropped, and we've only covered a little bit of this in this video. But we'll go through it as we need to. And so without further ado, let us bring in our first client, Ray Palpatine. Hey, I just kissed you, and this is crazy, but I am dead now. Let's have a Force Ghost baby. Gag. Lucasfilm announced that the upcoming planned Star Wars film featuring Ray Palpatine will be directed by documentarian and activist Charmaine Obad Chinoy. Sounds lame. I probably mispronounced that, and I don't really care. <laughs> now... Obviously, Star Wars Celebration happened, and a lot of things were revealed at Star Wars Celebration, a lot of which happened last week and we weren't able to cover. But we did see a picture going around of a pregnant Rey. Yeah, so we are going to address that. Um, People are saying that it's fake. I would not be surprised if it's not. Yeah, but they are making another film with Rey. That apparently she's going to be creating the new Jedi Order for some reason. Because we can't have Luke doing that. We have to have this person who didn't work for anything, didn't actually have any suffering, and literally just got handed everything and was the best ever. She gets to do it. Because reasons. There is a market for this stuff. We have to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. There was obviously a big crowd at Star Wars Celebration, and that's great. We don't find Star Wars interesting anymore, and we are not alone. The information that's important to look at here is the fact that the viewership for all the Star Wars shows and stuff have dwindled significantly. Understatement. So, even shows like, for example, Andor, which, according to what everybody has told me, is pretty good, it didn't pull in the viewership they were hoping. Because no one was interested. Same thing goes for Mandalorian Season 3. Doesn't mean people aren't watching. It doesn't mean there isn't an audience. But the viewership numbers have continued to dwindle, not go up. Mm -hmm. So, going back to the drawing board and going back to a thing that pretty much we could claim is single-handedly responsible for the divide in the Star Wars fandom and the dwindling of the Star Wars fandom, it's not fully responsible. There are other projects they came out with and things that made people even more apathetic to it. Mm -hmm. But... The Last Jedi was very much a divisive turning point for a lot of people. I still haven't even watched it. Yeah, you're lucky to haven't. And just because people on Twitter like to clip things out of context, just because she hasn't watched it doesn't mean I haven't. I did. I watched the entire thing, and I regret my life choices. <laughs> there, there. But I did watch it. So quiet. Does cinema sense count? Because I count it as a watch. I just have them watch it for me and then let them talk about everything wrong with the movie, which was literally the entire movie. Yeah, regardless of how you feel about Star Wars currently, the numbers do not lie and the numbers show a downward trend. That means that this is not necessarily going to revive the brand. There are a lot of people saying, oh, well, I guess the vocal minority was a vocal minority after all. If it was, the numbers would be not supportive of our narrative, it would be supportive of your narrative. Shocking. But they're not. Also shocking. It's not. The numbers show a decline, and it doesn't matter how many people show up for Celebration or how many people do Star Wars stuff. It's the numbers that matter. The numbers are the money. The numbers are the people watching. The numbers are the people who are going to go buy stuff. If none of that gets higher and it continues to go lower... It doesn't matter how many people scream and cry about it on Twitter. These movies need to make money. 
if they do not make the money that they are said to have, then that's a problem. Now, when I say that, it's specifically because there are rumors, and we even overheard a conversation, which got a lot of people mad on Twitter. I said I overheard a conversation. Never did I claim it was objective fact. I simply said we heard a conversation in the movie theater about how Disney buys out or rents out theaters when movies aren't doing well. Because we literally heard people who work in the theater say that they had to clean out empty theaters. But, but you need to give us proof. How is a first-hand overhearing of a conversation from people who work in said theater not definitive proof? It isn't definitive proof. That's the thing. It's not. But you're asking for proof of the source that we are the source. And I get you don't have to believe us and you don't have to go along with what we have to say. But don't ask for proof like an idiot because that's stupid. I'm not going to go see it. I know a lot of people aren't interested in going to see it. And I don't think the audience that remains, as much as it's dwindling, will be enough to continue that this franchise continues to make money and becomes anywhere near the juggernaut that it once was. Yeah, you're not wrong. And yes, it's Ray Palpatine, because that's what she is. A Palpatine. Moving on. And speaking of Star Wars, next up we have the Acolyte. Down with, like, the patriarchy. That outfit is horrendous. It's a metal bikini. So she's always Star Wars, right? But why does it have nipples? I don't know. I don't want to know. Actress Jodie Turner-Smith, who plays a character who is some kind of leader in the upcoming Acolyte series, recently made the outlandish claim that, quote, Star Wars is very, like, patriarchal, end quote. Sigh! I literally have nothing else to say but sigh! There's a problem with this that... Yes, Star Wars have been somewhat male-led, but there have been plenty of characters and female characters in the movies that were strong female characters that didn't need to be propped up on a pedestal by blasting the other characters. That is true. I mean, Princess Leia, Padme, Ahsoka, all of the female Jedi Masters, Asajj Ventress. Need I go on? But we get these narratives and these talking points that are just stupid and they make you sound like you don't know what you're talking about, but also that you've never watched Star Wars. It's not a patriarchal thing. And let's say it was. The last movies have been with a female lead. Most of the other stuff have had female focuses. And now you're going to say it's patriarchal? Really? <laughs> and... The Acolyte series is being developed by the former uh, assistant of um, <clears throat> H.W., um, Leslie Headland. Yeah, that will end well. I don't find this interesting. I think we'll report on it. Yeah, it's definitely entertaining and more content for us. Yeah, but stop saying stupid things. Look, there should be a rule that if you are in a film or whatever, these kind of talking points don't put butts in seats. So you want people to come. Saying Star Wars is patriarchal and doesn't have a concept of, of good or bad, that tells people that you don't know what you're talking about and not to watch your product. Yeah, I mean, literally the whole concept of Star Wars was a fight between good and evil. Regardless, I'm tired of staring at this whatever it is that they're wearing, and I, I honestly just think this is going to be a train wreck. It also has an intimacy coordinator, so that should be fun. Yeah, that's going to end extremely badly. Again, we don't really have any context about this series yet. All we know is it's got strong women in it, and that's pretty much all they gave us. So how far along this series is, I don't actually know. I don't think we want to know. If you can't tell me what a certain character is in this TV show at this point, and you're announcing stuff about it at Celebration, that's a little weird. Yeah, I mean... Didn't they already announce things about the Ahsoka show before this? Yes, and they even gave us a trailer. This, they're not giving a trailer, and all they can tell us is, my character's strong and female, and he, she's like a leader. Down with the patriarchy. Boring. I agree. Moving on. And next up, we have the Marvels. M. She should smile more. Yeah, I agree. Marvel Studios released their first teaser trailer for the upcoming The Marvels film, and it isn't getting the glowing reception Disney Marvel was looking for. 
Your own boss said it looked retarded. True. <laughs> People say a lot of things about this kind of film because it was supposed to be Captain Marvel 2 and it was changed to be the Marvels and they're bringing in, you know, uh, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, and they're bringing in, I don't know what her name is, Monica Rambeau. I don't know what they're calling her as a hero name. And the whole thing is that they can switch powers by using powers. Their powers are like intermingled and they're all switching places and it, it, it looked like a mess. It also makes no sense. They've never had any contact before, so how are they suddenly intertwined? I don't know. She apparently touches some things, but also the music choice they used, where it was, don't tell me to smile. <laughs> it, it, it Weird. It almost sounds like they're still salty about the people saying that Bree should smile more. Bree should act more. Uh, that's too much. I just see people, and I just play people. Is that like a personal attack or something? Ugh. She has no charisma. No, and she even had to make a YouTube channel to try to repair her career, which didn't really work. It backfired, actually. Yeah. Now, do I think this film will make money? Yes, I do. Probably. Do I think it will make a profit? No. Doubtful. I think that it'll probably break even. I think that Disney will try to spin it as a success. We'll see numbers like, oh, it was the best opening for the franchise. And the, the franchise is one other movie. Yeah. It was the best opening for this franchise on a Tuesday. Um, okay. That's nice, Timmy. Go back to your room now. See you next Wednesday. <laughs> we still have to finish that. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> we'll get back to the Wednesday review at some point. Not now. Never please. But regardless, uh, I'm not interested in seeing this. A lot of people aren't interested in seeing this so much so that it's actually been ratioed. It's been ratioed to Oblivion on YouTube. You'll need the Chrome extension to see that. Mm -hmm. um, people are saying, oh, it's the, the bigots and the chuds and the incels are after them again. No, no, it's not. It's just the same people. You have to understand that Captain Marvel was sandwiched between two of the most popular movies of the year. And so it got a lot of traction and a lot of buzz based off of that. Was it a bad film? No. Was it a good film? No. It was mediocre at best. I mean, like I've said before, I enjoyed it my first time watching it, but then on, on second review I was like, huh, you know what? That's a plot hole, that's a plot hole, that's lazy writing, and what the hell just was, was that? I've only seen it once, and I just didn't like it. I didn't hate it either. And, you know, they'll never cut this out of context and post it on Twitter, because why not? Hmm. But I didn't hate it. I didn't like it either. I didn't jump up and down about it, but it was nothing to write home about. I felt like it was completely pointless, and I felt like I had to watch it in order to see the last film. And I actually made my wife rewatch it with me so that I could catch up. Yeah, which I didn't mind. I mean, did I? I don't remember. Did I give you spoilers? I don't know. I just think the film didn't need to exist. I think that there was things said by Brie that were not smart and that her ways of trying to uh, fix her image hasn't worked. Now, Disney's going to make this into a huge success, but in reality, it's probably going to break even. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll make some profit, but I guarantee the numbers will not be as high, and Disney knows this. Oh, yes. They're, they will probably rent out more theaters. And why do you think it's been delayed so much, hmm? Rewrites, reshoots. Maybe. Regrets. <laughs> I was going to say recasting, but that's better. Wish it was recasting. Yeah. But the main reason is because two of these characters are from Disney Plus shows. If you didn't see the Disney Plus shows, you have no clue who they are. And if you didn't watch Captain Marvel, you didn't miss anything, and you don't know who, she, who Brie is either. So... If anything, you have to watch a bunch of other shows to even know what's going on here. And that makes no sense. And people aren't going to watch it just based off of that because having to watch all this other content and have it be interconnected isn't working. What they should have done is made a connected TV universe and a connected Marvel universe and in the films and then connected them loosely. Yeah, I think they were trying to go with what they used to do with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It didn't work. You must watch everything. No, no thanks. I don't have time for that. Not that I'm interested. Yeah. Shall we move on? 
And next up, speaking of Disney, we have the Little Mermaid. The newly powerful Ursula seemed unbeatable, but Ariel refuses to give up. She steers a rat ship into Ursula and defeats her. How when she's a swimming creature and has no legs? And how does she even know how to steer a ship considering she's never been on one before? I have so many questions and we'll never get an answer. In some imagery shown from the licensed novelizations of the new live-action Little Mermaid film, it was revealed just how far Disney is willing to go to make the new Ariel a, quote, strong, independent woman, end quote. Ugh. Now, the artist's depiction of Ursula is... It's ugly. Now, you can see Ariel... I'm using, I'm using air quotes because it's not Ariel. Yeah is on the ship and is steering it into Ursula. Now, this apparently did happen in the Broadway for it, and it wasn't Eric doing it, but regardless, they've kept saying all these things about how they're going to subvert things and modernize it, and it just sounds boring, and we're not even going to go into the whole, oh, you cast this thing, you cast this uh, person as a black person and they're white or whatever. Look, that whole thing is ridiculous. It's outrage marketing, and mm -hmm. it shows. Yeah, plus just looks wrong. How is she able to be upright and steering a ship when she's not even supposed to be able to stand when she has a tail? She's holding on to it real tight. No, it's not how it works. She's literally using her legs inside the costume to prop herself up. That should not be how it works. Oh my god, she's like using her tail for balance. What are you talking about? She's like a girl boss and that legs are amazing. No, she's a mermaid, not a lamia. They're very different in the, in the way they use their tails. You're just a bigot. Fine, call me a bigot, but I'm right. Yeah, we're right bigots. <laughs> <laughs> and no, not alt-right bigots. And obviously, we're joking, but... We're technically more somewhere in the middle. Uh, this looks like a train wreck. Good luck with this, Disney. It's got, like, a ton of dislikes. People aren't going to go see this. You're trying so hard to market it, and you're going to fail. Yeah. Nothing more to say on that, so let's move on. To a Disney topic we have plenty to talk about, Nani from Lilo and Stitch. Disney's more identity politics obsessed fans have taken to attacking newly cast actress Sydney Elizabeth Agudon for not being dark enough to portray Nani in the studio's upcoming live action take on Lilo and Stitch. Despite the fact that she is apparently a native Hawaiian. People are saying that in the movie it's different because it's not the same as with Ariel, because uh, this thing, it's, it's very ingrained in Hawaiian culture and all this stuff, and so she needs to be this color. Well, guess what? The Little Mermaid was written by a Dutch white man. Are you saying that it has culture that we're taking away from it by casting a black woman? Yes. So their narratives here don't make any sense? Yeah. Let's read what some of the things that they're saying. Go for it. Stop arguing with racists about colorism in regards to Lilo and Stitch casting. They will never agree or understand your point. They got up this morning with stupid on the brain. Don't waste your time. Just block them. Okay, block. I genuinely hope she gets bullied into dropping the role. Because this is effing wicked. Ugh. I'm guessing Scarlett Johansson said no. Like all shade, all offense to Nani's actress in this upcoming Leo and Stitch, because how do you look at the character you're supposed to be playing, then look in the mirror and see that you are whitewashing slash actively taking a role from someone more marginalized and still accept that role. These people are insane. I refuse to sing along to the Hawaiian roller coaster ride with a white woman. That S is canceled. There are white people in Hawaii. How did y'all watch Lilo and Stitch and not see race, colonialism, and the disintegration of the indigenous family unit in the actual film? What movie did y'all watch? Did you only see the blue alien or... It was a children's film. Nobody watched it and went, Look, this is secretly a depiction of this and a depiction of that. I know there were scenes cut out that had certain things, and I know that there were some messaging 
in there, but it was hidden messaging, not in your face. Yeah. And so guess what? A lot of kids watched it and went, ha ha, look at the blue alien. They didn't care about anything else. Who is also cute and fluffy. Also cute and fluffy. Thank you. That's all I wanted. Mika, Tala, Krista. You have such a good stitch voice. Anyways, this is ridiculous. Um, shame on all of you. You are all hypocrites and you all know it. And I guarantee we'll get some angry comments and I don't care. You know we're right or you wouldn't have to comment. If you were so sure, you wouldn't have to say anything. That is true. Let's move on. To the other craziness, J.K. Rowling. Warner Bros. Discovery announced that their newly rebranded streaming service, Max, ordered a new Harry Potter TV series that will adapt J.K. Rowling's original books with J.K. Rowling signing on as a producer. Now, as you guys know from the past, what do you think, how do you think Twitter responded to this? Quite negatively and very out of proportion. Yeah. At my first book club meeting last month, one woman offhandedly said, I mean, I'm sure we all read Harry Potter, but wish J.K. Rowling would shut the F up. And tonight I got to tell her, hey, thanks so much for saying that. It made me feel excited to join such a lovely group. Huh? Think Things that never happened? Yeah, um, yeah. They should sell J.K. Rowling pinatas at the Universal Orlando, at Universal Orlando, at Universal Pics, at J.K. Rowling. Let me know what you think. I think that one was the funniest of them all. How are you going to make a J.K. Rowling pinata? And what, is out of it is just going to come Harry Potter merch? No, out of it's just going to come lots of tears of soy. <laughs> Accio Soiterium! Realized, aside from J.K. Rowling being a prick and her books in hindsight being racist, xenophobic, and anti-Semitic, the Harry Potter TV show we made by HBO Max means they're probably going to cast Americans. If none of the first half was true, that's enough to give me the ick. Not anti-Semitic, not xenophobic, not racist, and also what a, whatever. I, I don't even know what else to say. It's not crazy to have the person who created the world be involved with a show that is taking stuff from the world and making it into a TV show. Yeah, and I think it's a great idea that they're taking each book and turning it into one season. That means they will be able to incorporate a lot more than they ever could in the movies. Hell, in the movies, we might even get Peeves and the Giant Squid, which we did get in Hogwarts Legacy! Obviously, everybody's going to boycott this and terrible because J.K. Rowling and whatever. If you guys start harassing the, chi the actors playing the children... That says a lot more about you than it does about the actors. Your lives are not going to matter more when you're targeting the lives of other people, too, to make a point. Especially when they're children. If anything, I've heard things we, we don't really need a remake. And they're saying that they're going to be like very careful to cast more black people in this. It might not be a good show at all, but crying and screaming about it because the person who made the world is involved with it is ridiculous, stupid, and just shows a lot more about you than anybody else. Indeed. Moving on. And lastly, we have the rising of the shield hero. Our regrets make us stronger. I should hope so, considering three of those heroes are total wimps. Kadokawa and Cinema Citrus have finally announced a release date for the upcoming third season of the rising of the shield hero anime. Yay! We're currently catching up on season two. Yeah, so we're not going to go into spoilers, but if you haven't watched Rising of the Shield Hero, Season 1 is incredible. Season 2 so far is... Not as good. The second season apparently isn't good because the manga wasn't good apparently as well, so they're trying to get through it as fast as they can, which, whatever. Apparently, Season 3 is supposed to be some like really good stuff, so I'm looking forward to that. But this is a show that is extremely good. It is worth a watch. If, even if you're not a fan of anime, watch the first season. I guarantee you'll get hooked. Watch just the pilot episode. You'll get hooked. Which is longer than normal, by the way. Mm-hmm. I mean, I started watching it on my own on our big screen, and then Master was doing something else but, oh, but heard it, and then was like, wait, what? Let me join you. And we were both hooked. Yeah. This is a great show. We're getting through season two. Again, as I said... Season 2 apparently is not as good, so if you're going to want to get to Season 3 and it turns out to be as good as we're being told, that would be great. Uh, but you're going to have to put up with a little bit of... Mm, you're going to have to lower your expectations for the second season. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. But it's good. 
first season is great. Unfortunately, the voice actor for now for me had to be changed for season two because unfortunately the person who played him passed away. But they did get someone who sounds very similar. It's a great anime. It's a good take in the, you know, summon to another world thing, isekai genre. It's a bit darker. It's interesting. You should definitely give it a watch. And we're excited for season three. Uh, We just have to get through season two. Yep. We'll probably finish it by tonight. We'll see. Mm Mm-hmm. But moving on. And with that being our last client of the day, it is time for us to reveal the diagnosis of the week. And we got an interesting one for you this week. Do tell. So the diagnosis for this week is echopraxia. Please explain. Echopraxia is basically an involuntary repetition of other people's movements or actions. So mimicking certain ways you talk, how you act, doing certain things. It's like a motor tick. How does this relate to what we're talking about here? Well, a lot of people in Hollywood will do certain things. For example, race swap this, change that, say this has gay, this has this, this has whatever. And then everybody else falls in line. They copy it. They go through the motions. That's what I like to think this fits here is because they mimic the movement of characters, actions of TV stars, um, repeated harmful behaviors like punching or kicking, you know, they do all these different things. They repeat things rather than actually come up with anything original and it shows. And a lot of them don't even care about what they're doing. They're just doing it because, well, this one did it. So we all need to fall in line. The dominoes need to all fall in a straight line. And we see this quite a lot, and unfortunately, we're going to see more of it. Now, maybe there is some change. The pendulum is swinging, but it will take time for us to see whether that has a wider impact. But that's why I feel this is a great diagnosis for this week. I agree. And now we move on to the remedy of the week. And this week, we are sending you to Let's Be Frank Culture, who has been very good to my husband as of late, so we decided to give him a shout out. Yeah, he's the founder of Let's Be Frank Media. You may recognize him more from his main channel, which is Let's Be Frank. It's a more political channel. We are focusing on his other channel where he covers movies, TV shows, and video games reviews. It's called Let's Be Frank Culture. Uh, so he's got a lot of subscribers on his you know, main channel, but this one could use some love, and he's done some great coverage. And he's been really great whenever he takes something of mine to use or whatever, like a compilation I've made or whatever. He always credits me and really appreciate it. And he's been there, you know... For us, he's actually one of the people who helped us get over to a thousand subscribers, uh, along with Josiah. Uh, great guy, worth checking out his channel. He does some great coverage over there. So grab your mouse buttons, head on over there, and let him know that Gothic Therapy referred you. Indeed. But that is all we have for this week. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and also make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe with notifications on so you do not miss your weekly therapy session. Or you will be charged. But remember, when you do subscribe, your first session is free, so smash those buttons like they're bad kitties. And do consider joining us at the Dusk, Midnight, or Dawn level. We would appreciate it quite a lot. You can also find links to all of our socials in the description below, as well as links to our merch store and our Discord server known as The Clinic. Be sure to check them out. And if you don't want to keep following us on YouTube, you can also find us on Rumble and Odyssey. Yeah, stay tuned for some stuff we're going to be doing with the... uh, Hopefully next month we're working on starting up a member stream, uh, members only. Uh, It'll be called Group Therapy, so stay tuned for more information on that. But otherwise, that's all we got for this week, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Gothic Therapy, out.